So in this lesson, we're going to talk about solving unsimplified equations. And what I mean by an unsimplified equation, um, I mean that, you know, there are parentheses in there or there are multiple instances of the unknown showing up so that it looks like you have to distribute or combine like terms before you can turn it into a two-step equation and then just use your pose. Um, so let's look at some examples. And there are multiple strategies for these. Because there are so many things done to x, there are multiple pathways you can take to simplify uh, the equation and then solve it. Um, so I'm going to show you two methods for this one. This is an instance where it looks like you want to combine like terms, and you totally can. You can simplify this down by uh, you know, combining the like terms and moving things around and getting 6x and 2x together and negative 7 and negative 5, and that'll turn it into a two-step equation, and then you just solve it like a two-step equation. But there's another way. So I'm going to show you the, the traditional way, the simplify it first and then use your pose. Um, so I want to commute, I want to put the 6x with the 2x, but that minus 7's in the way. And whenever there's a subtraction, I know I can't commute. So I have to convert those equations into adding the opposite using my definition of subtraction. And then I can commute. Now finally I get 6x plus 2x plus negative 7 plus negative 15 equals negative 100 using my commutative of addition. And then I can combine these like terms to get an 8x and combine the negative 7 plus the negative 15 and get a negative 22. And that equals negative 100. And that's combining like terms and substitution. Um, and so then now I have a two-step equation. I have an 8x and I'm adding a negative 22. And I know that I want to add the 22 first to both sides, strategically done so that those cancel. And I'm left with an 8x equals a negative 78. And so then I just divide both sides by 8. And so those 8 cancels, and I got negative 78 over 8, which simplifies to negative 39 over 4. And so then I want to check to make sure it is negative 39 over 4, and I did this right. So hopefully it is. Um, so 6 times negative 39 divided by 4 minus 7 plus 2 times negative 39 divided by 4 minus 15. Hopefully I type that in right, and I get a negative 100. So it is indeed correct, and so my solution then is negative 39 4, so I can box it off and put my happy face there. All right, now there's another way to do this one. That's not simplifying. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to go directly to the pose and um, subtract off some stuff, or add on some stuff, uh, to make the equation simpler that way. So instead of combining like terms, I'm going to do my strategic addition. And so what I want to do is I want to add a 7, and I want to add a 15. Okay, 7 plus 15 is the same thing as adding the 22, but I'm going to do it strategically in two chunks. Um, and I have to add 7 and 15 on this side as well, because it's a property of equality. Got to do the same thing to both sides. But what happens is those cancel, those cancel. I'm left with 6x plus 2x equals the negative 78. And so by using the addition property of equality strategically, then I can get those to be taken off altogether. And I just have to deal with this now. So 6x plus 2x is 8x. That equals negative 78. This is combining like terms. And then um, I just divide both sides by 8 using depot. And then I get the exact same answer. The difference is I'm going to use that strategic addition or subtraction first just to get rid of the need to use the definition of subtraction and the commutative property. And you can do that. But remember, it's addition or subtraction. There are no parentheses in here at all. This problem is purely an addition subtraction problem. And so I can use that shortcut and avoid the associated property um, by doing this way. I can't if their parentheses are multiplied. It's only with addition and subtraction. So if you have a problem like this where you're combining like terms, you can just combine like terms. Or you can do the strategic addition or subtraction. Just make sure you add the same thing to both sides and there are no parentheses and the only operations in here between the terms is addition and subtraction. So now let's look at one where you can't do anything like that at all. It'd actually be evil and wrong to do so. 
Um, that means uh, a parenthesis is involved and there are mixed operations involved. So for this problem, I have multiply, multiply, and then subtract. And between the terms, or in between terms, I have multiplication involved. And so I can't add one because that's not really a one. There's a three times it in the way. So if you wanted to add one to this, it would be evil and wrong. Don't do that. What, and if you see this problem, your brain should be thinking at this point, oh, hey, that's a distribution problem. And you can totally solve that by this problem by distribution. And so let's try it this way. Um, so if I take 3 times the quantity 5x minus 1 equals 21, and I distribute, or I sprinkle my 3, I get 3 times 5x minus 3 times 1 equals 21, and then 15x minus 3 equals 21. And I've turned the equation into a two-step equation, which I can just solve using my pose now. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Those 3's are gone. I get 15x equals 24, and then I can divide both sides by 15. And when I divide both sides by 15, I get x equals 8 fifths. Now before I supply my reasonings, I want to make sure I did this correctly. So 3 times uh, 5 times 8 fifths minus 1. Close off my parentheses and I better get 21. And I do. So I did this correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and say I distributed. And then I used substitution and then I used APO, and then I used DEPO. And I can write my solution set up in uh, the correct notation, which is the set containing 8 fifths, and put my happy face. Now, there's another way of seeing this problem. Um, and you can do this if it's just distribution on one side. And it's realizing that, you know, this is really 3 times some quantity. And that quantity just happens to look like 5x minus 1. So instead of treating this like a distribution problem and distributing to get rid of the parentheses, I'm going to undo the whole need for the parentheses altogether, which is uh, I was showing a multiplication. So I'm going to use depot and divide that side of the equation and divide that side of the equation. So since this is 3 times some number and I divide it by the 3, the 3's are gone. And the only thing I'm left with here is 5x minus 1 and equaling a 7. And then now I have it as a two-step equation. I can add my 1 to both sides. I get 5x equals 8. Divide both sides by 5. And I get x equals 8 fifths. The exact same answer, but in fewer steps. I'm not actually using the distributed property at all. I'm going to use depo. And then I'm going to use apo. And then I'm going to use depo again. And so I can do that instead of distributing if I, if I want to. Um, I get the exact same answer. Now, don't go crazy with this um, because you have to be super careful if you choose this. You can't always do this. Um, I'm going to show you an example where you actually don't want to try to use this trick. And the times you don't want to use this trick is when I have other stuff out here okay, that I also have to, to divide out. And so here's, here's the example. If I have x plus 3 times a quantity 4x minus 7 plus 5 equals 193. And we're going to go ahead and call this a 3 hamster problem. Okay. Um, I can't just divide by 3. Because if I do, it actually makes the problem worse. And I don't ever want to make my problem worse. And here's how it makes the problem worse. I'm going to do this in uh, this purpley color. So if I want to divide by 3, I don't just divide that thing by 3. I have to divide that by 3, and then that by 3, and then that by 3. And so that gives me a division problem. That gives me a fraction. That gives me a fraction. And so the last thing I want to do um, is to put fractions in a problem where they didn't exist. So this is big frowny face. Don't divide it out. This is one where you're actually better off simplifying first and then uh, dealing with what you have left over. And so you want to get rid of the parentheses here first by using the distributed property. You want to sprinkle that 3 first. So I get x plus 3 times 4x minus 3 times 7 plus 5 equals 193 using the distribu uh -oh, distributed property. And so then I'm going to simplify x plus 12x minus 21 plus 5 equals 193, 
and this is our trusty substitution. And so then x plus 12x is 13x, and then negative 21 plus 5 is a minus 16 equals 193, and that is my combining like term slash substitution. And so now I have my two-step equation. I'm going to add 16 strategically to get rid of that minus 16. I get 13x equals whatever 193 plus 16 is, and that is 209. Okay, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 13. And I don't think 209 is divisible by 13 evenly, and it's not. So that means it looks like x is 209 over 13. Now that is a, a, a not a pretty answer, so I want to make sure I did this right before I, I do anything else. Okay, so my answer should be 209 divided by 13. And so then I'm going to type it in to this calculator, replacing the x with 209 over 13. Um, 4 times 209 divided by 13, um, minus se 7, close the parentheses, close the parentheses, and add the 5, and I better get 193, and I do. Phew, I did it right. So yay, that's correct. So that means my solution is indeed 209 over 13. Okay, but the beautiful part is that 209 over 13 didn't appear until the very end of the problem when I had my final answer. All through my work, I just had integers. But if I had tried that trick and divided by 3 uh, first, then I would have put a fraction there, a fraction there, and a fraction there. And I would have had to done all this similar kind of work filled with fractions. Um, now, here's the thing, though. When I see people try this problem, a lot of time what they'll do is they'll just divide that piece by 3. And if I just divide that piece by 3, am I really treating this side correctly? No, I'm supposed to divide the entire side by 3, or each of these little terms by 3. So I don't want to do that in this case, okay? I actually want to distribute and combine like terms. So don't try to use this trick unless you really understand it. Um, that means that I just if I have other stuff outside, um, that multiplication problem, I shouldn't use it. If it's just plain old distribution, then I can totally use it. Now, if going through this example here, like you don't quite get it, then don't. If you love the distributive, distributive property and you totally understand the distributive property, then if you always do it this way, um, you're going to be fine. So you just need to, to pick the way you, you understand best and stick with it and get perfect with it. And the more you do these kind of problems, the more you do the examples, the more you'll see how to do these kind of shortcuts. All right, so that's it for solving equations that look like they require simplification first. Just be careful and make sure that you apply these rules uh, evenly and correctly.